So hello everyone, and welcome to It Builds Character number 6, Darth Vader. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. Just want to make sure I post out that we're live. Um, and hello, and thank you to everybody who's already here in the chat. You guys, you It Builds Character guys, are... Uh, are pretty stalwart in your constant appearances, so I appreciate it. Also, let me know, um, I switched over to OBS Studio to mess around with some stuff. Let me know how I am versus the um, the background music. If I'm too soft, if it's too loud, let me know and, I, and I'll tweak as we go here. Um, so, uh, character is live. It's sorry guys, I'm just posting on so I parental things caused uh, a little bit of a delay. That's what happens with a six month old, so um but he's finally down to sleep and I was able to give my wife a night all to herself, so hey. That's important stuff. Um It's quite quiet, huh? Okay. Is that any better? Mm. Oh, wait, I wonder. I'm messing... Let me know. Is that any better for the music? Mm. Yeah, so let me know before I get started how the... Uh... Oh, you. Um, so, all right. Okay, so, uh, this is a show where I build characters based on fan suggestions. So today is Darth Vader. I'm down a smidge. Smidge it is. Uh, so... Let me know how that sounds. So how am I going to build build Darth Vader? This is obviously a double-edged sword, because I'm never going to make everybody happy. Uh, I think I'm well aware of that. Uh, I assume you guys are as well. That it, It's hard to build a fantasy, a sci-fantasy a sci uh, character in a fantasy game. They're just the logistics of space travel and robotics and lightsabers alone... With the exception of like the Sunblade is relatively close to it, that uh, it's just not going to really be super possible. So we're going to have to take some artistic liberty on this one. So this one, normally with every other one that we do, uh, I usually start like you would normally start in the player's handbook, determining what your ability scores are going to be, what your... Uh, uh, what your class is going to be, what your race is going to be. We know Darth Vader is a human. Tech, you know, I mean, it, it's spacey, so we're going to put race human. He's going to be variant human. Vader is lawful evil. We're going to put the background. I guess he's... We'll use Acolyte, but he's, you know, he's a Jedi. He was a, or he was a Jedi. Um, so, now, this is going to be tricky. I've seen a lot of great suggestions in the chat, a lot of suggestions for the use of Mystic, which I completely agree, Psionics are about the closest thing you're going to get to the Force uh, in Dungeons & Dragons. It's mind-based magic, it is not, um, you know, things of that nature. So uh, I, just full stop up front, I've never liked psionics uh this stems back to me trying to understand them in three five and it just like i would just sit down and i'd look at it i felt like i would just stare at the screen and just be like yeah three i don't care i don't want to focus on it i will say after taking the time to go through and look at the mystic in 5e i feel like i understand psionics better in the fifth edition incarnation but that being said I don't want to go through and have to put in all of that psionic stuff. 
uh, so he's not going to be a mystic. But realistically, probably uh, you could. I guess you could probably argue that maybe a mystic eldritch knight fighter. They both use intelligence. The eldritch knight fighter's level three, uh, three ability lets them summon their weapon back to their hand. Uh, very Jedi. So that would be um, if you want to follow kind of existing classes that are out there that aren't really homebrew. That would probably be the way to go. Um, I actually have a player coming up in a home in an offline game who's going to be playing a mystic. So I had to do the research to understand how it works so that I can properly call him on his bullshit. Uh, and he's the kind of guy who will try to manipulate the system. So um, that being said. We're going to use, probably I think for the first time here on It Builds Character, a homebrew uh, subclass. One that has not existed um, and not, you know, not official by any means. It never would be, but I like it and I think we're going to use it because I saw it many, many years ago. So what is that? That is the Way of the Jedi Monk. Uh, so, it, as you can see, it follows the progression of an Eldritch Knight, so it's a third casting class, uh, and it's, it's, it's homebrew, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to take that with a grain of salt, but the monk kind of fits with the Jedi mindset, things of that nature. So, let's take a look through this real quick, and we'll come back and see what we get. So... Uh, you learn three cantrips, Mage Hand, and two of your choice. Again, Mage Hand being your force pull, or a tactic could also be your push. You have a couple of access to limited spells. Um, let's see, do we get it? Are they specific? Uh, you regain all, there's a spell list that you get the spells from. Your spell casting ability is Wisdom. Jedis are wise. Can't really argue that. Some less wise than other when High Ground is brought into play. Um... And then part of the class is that you get a lightsaber. Uh, and so it's built into the class, which is arguably a reasonable decision to make. Because as part of your Jedi training, you typically have to go through and build your own lightsaber. So it being a function of the class sort of makes sense to me. Um, so uh, you get to build your lightsaber. You take a ritual. Um... Lightsaber is a martial melee weapon with a finesse and light properties and sheds dim light in a 15-foot radius. It's considered a monk weapon and can be used with any monk abilities that require an unarmed strike or free hand, such as flurry of blows or deflect missiles. Again, remember, as a monk, you can catch, uh, you know, you can deflect ranged attacks or catch them and throw them back. Now you can use your lightsaber, theoretically, to do the same thing. So if someone shoots something at you, you could block it with your lightsaber... Or reflect it back rather than you catching an arrow and throwing it back it'd be like deflecting a blaster bolt and sending it back I said you know arguably a pretty I mean so far a solid representation of a Jedi I see Kensai monk getting thrown out there um, it's you're absolutely right uh, monk I feel like monk in general fits the Jedi more Jedi than Sith but fits the the code you know fits that kind of discipline uh, structure that you're supposed to have there is actually a homebrew um, Jedi class that is a full level 1 to 20 class that's built heavily off of um, this kind of the thoughts in this class I would use that but rather than go 100% homebrew class I decided to go a homebrew subclass that keeps us a little bit in line um, so, let's see what else we get. Um, uh, you know, it talks about the blade's damage is radiant. Damage die is a d6, but you gain damage as your monk level goes up. So the highest your, uh, your lightsaber could do is a d10. It also is a light weapon, so you could dual wield. Um, if you attempt to create a third lightsaber, you break one of the other ones. That's just a function of mechanics of the game. Um, four cents... Your attunement, uh, the force lets you sense the current emotional state of creatures within 30 feet. You can sense emotions like fear, anger, amusement, confusion. Advantage on insight checks uh, on creatures whose emotion you can sense, along with advantage on animal handling checks if applicable. You can also detect the presence of creatures you can't see within 30 feet. The ability penetrates barriers, but certain things will prevent that from happening. Uh, emotionless creatures such as constructs cannot be detected this way. 
Blade Weaving is your level 11 ability. When you use the attack action to strike with your lightsaber, the next spell you cast uh, with a casting time of one action or less can be done as a bonus action by spending two key points. And lastly, there's Shatter Point, which is your level 17 ability. You see every fault line in your target. All you have to do is pour force into the cracks to shatter it. As a bonus action, choose a target you can see within 10 feet. Your next attack or spell attack against the target automatically succeeds. Attack rolls hit and the target fails its saving throw. And ignore any resistances or immunity that would normally apply. Uh, once you use this feature again, you can't use it until you finish a short rest. I'd say that probably should be a long rest ability, but still. Um, so, uh, then we have our Jedi spell list. Uh, and there are some Jedi specific spells that they added. Um, which are basically very similar to existing spells. But uh, you can see here your friends is your Jedi mind trick. Mage hand is your Jedi, uh, you know, you're kind of pulling things to you. And then some of these other ones sort of make sense. Minor illusion to make sounds. Message to send kind of, you know, you could fix things. There's, there's a lot of these are all very uh, thematic. Uh, then we have our first level spells, absorb elements. Uh, animal Friendship, Bane, Bless, Catapult, Charm Person, Comprehend Languages, Command. We can see all of these spells here. We don't get too many, so we have to keep that in mind. And we are building, as pointed out here, uh, we are building Vader. So we're not going to be doing a lot of jumping and crazy acrobatically flips. Um, especially if you count what happens at the end of Rogue One, you don't need to be flipping around when you can literally like rip people apart with your mind. So... All right, let us, uh, so I just, I wanted to go through it a little bit just to talk about how it is going to be a monk, so we're going to build things based on that. Uh, so, let's get, jump back over here. Um, all right, so we are going to start as a monk, and we're going to go 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. I think we can argue that Vader, he has... See, now here's, a, I'm going to do a separate video on this because people don't know. Um, you don't necessarily have to use the given stat for a, a certain check. Like, you don't have to use charisma for intimidation if it's based on something else. Like, if you're using your physical strength to show up how you're intimidating somebody, you would use, it would be a strength intimidation check rather than a charisma intimidation check. Things of that nature. Uh, Vader has some strength to him as he is a robot mostly um, but he's got gonna have a pretty good wisdom and uh, in this instance it's gonna be wisdom and dexterity he's not super dexterous as we see but that functions that builds a monk's AC so we're gonna give him uh, 15 wisdom uh, let's, actually let's go 15 dex uh, 14 wisdom, 13 constitution, um, I'm going to give him 12 strength, 10 intelligence, and 8 charisma. Um, so, he's a variant human, because that's the only human that exists in my mind, so this is going to put his dexterity to a 16 to start. Um, we're going to take and put his, uh, we're going to keep Constitution there, and then we're going to put a plus one in his Wisdom, and we're going to give him Resilient Wisdom. So this is going to go to 16, so he's going to have Wisdom, Dexterity, and then let's jump ahead to the Monk, because we're going to need to grab stuff off of that. So, we've got uh, Strength Saves as well. Oops. Strength Saves. We're going to do what we always do and build these characters at level 12. Um, I See, I don't, dis I don't disagree with your persuasion, but I'm going to say that his persuasions aren't really persuasions so much as intimidations. And I'm going to argue that they're wisdom intimidation checks because he's using, like, his intimidation isn't based on his force of personality. It's based on the force. Uh, and a lot of the times we see him intimidate people is because nobody else has access to the Force, so it's a mystical thing that they don't understand. Um, so yeah, that would be my point. So we're going to give him, obviously, the Friends cantrip. Actually, he doesn't really do much in the way of mind-tricking, but uh, I'm starting to get off track already. 
So this is going to be a four. We're going to go down here and we gave him resilient uh, wisdom. So what else do we have? Uh, let's get his... Uh, he doesn't really have much in the way of stealth. I think he deserves religion. It's part of the Jedi as a religion. If you go by Obi Wan, uh, this kind of discussion uh, and the discussions in A New Hope, it's a religion. Uh, we already discussed that he's not very acrobatic, um, and I'm gonna give him a decent insight because he is able to read Luke's feelings pretty well. Um, uh, and he gets one for being a. Um, a human, so we're going to give him perception, and we'll jump ahead to see what acolytes get. Acolytes get insight and religion. So this is fifth edition, so that means we can choose two other spells of our, or two other skills of our choosing. So we're going to choose intimidation, um, and see the problem is people are going to want. I would say survival because dude managed to survive. All that, but that's not how survival checks work. Uh, so we're going to give him... It's tricky in this scenario. Is Arcana, like, knowledge of the Force? Um... Hmm. But to your guys' point here in the chat, we've seen some, uh, some evidence of... You know, you're like, people say he's intimidating, but you have that kind of just, like, shit-eating grin guy in one of the first movie, you know, and I think in A New Hope... Where he's just, like, shit-talking Vader, and then Vader um, just chokes the guy out. But, like, he wasn't afraid of him. He just was like, oh, you're a little lapdog, blah, blah, blah. So, I guess we'll give Vader Arcana checks. Arcana skills, rather. 30-foot movement speed. I'm gonna say Vader has a 25-foot movement speed, and that has to do with the fact that he's got robot legs, and he doesn't seem to be very fast. Uh, so, what does he get for being a monk? Let's jump back to monk. He gets a lot, because he's a monk. Uh, we're going to say a lot of these monk abilities. Uh, we're actually just going to not give him unarmored movement at all. We're just going to remove that option, because Vader doesn't... He doesn't zip all around, really. We see that, you know. He usually brings things to him via the Force. Uh, so we're just going to ignore that function of the class. And we're going to say that a lot of these abilities that we get later on are tied to um, the robotics in his, uh, what keeps him alive. Like his immunity to poison that he'll get later on. We're going to say that that's a function of his armor and his robot, the robotics in his suit. Not rather than an inborn willingness and wholeness of body to expel toxins from within. Um... So again, we're going to play a little bit around with this stuff. So, uh, unarmored defense, his AC is going to be 10 plus his dex plus his wisdom. He's got martial arts, so he can use dex for his unarmed strikes and his attack rolls with bunk weapons. Again, we're only focusing on the lightsaber, so we're just going to really put this in here. Because you don't really see him actually fight much with fisticuffs, or that he would. But most importantly is um, martial arts. Uh, when you make, uh, when you, uh, take an attack action with a monk weapon, you can make an unarmed strike as a bonus action, which may be able to be replaced with, uh, if anything, we should say vulnerability to lightning. Um... And he has key points. We're going to throw them in here. Key points. He's going to have 12 key points. And those can be used for Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, or Step of the Wind. So, uh, Patient Defense. That's totally wrong. Patient Defense. Uh, one key point for dodge action as a bonus action. Um, flurry of blows. 
make a key point, make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action, step of the wind, disengage, or dodge. Uh, that's one key. Uh, key point. Get your dodge. So bonus action. Okay, so we actually don't even need the dungeon master guys. So we're just gonna get rid of that. Uh, we ignored unarmored movement. Um, he gets deflect missiles. We're gonna come back. Actually, you know what? Let's deal with the Jedi stuff first. So he's gonna get at level twelve. He's gonna have four cantrips, eight spells known. And first and second level spells, which also makes some sense because Anakin didn't really go through much in the way of Jedi training. Uh, so we know men. We know that uh, Mage Hand is one. Um, what are his other lists of options? Uh, we're gonna say Minor Illusion. Minor Illusion. Um. Hmm. We'll say message and well, I'd like to give him guidance because it's one of the best spells in the game. He didn't really get a whole lot of guidance and use it to his effectiveness. Well, he obviously didn't strike true very often either. So we're just going to give him mending. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but we're just going to pick out his spells as well. So he gets 8 spells total at level 12 from 1st and 2nd level spells. So let's see what we've got here. Um, so we've got... Uh, he does jump, actually, so I'm going to go through 1st level here. Uh, I'm going to give him Catapult, because that lets you launch things, and he does throw stuff at Luke via the Force. Um... Let's see. He doesn't really charm anybody. Uh, I don't really think he... He didn't really use, like, command or anything of that nature to, like, force people to stop doing things. Um, he does, obviously doesn't know Cure Wounds. Uh, this guy self? No. What are these? Force Push, Force Repulse, Healing Word, Heroism, Jump, Long Strider, Shield, Silent Image. Let's see what some of these ones that they put in here are. I don't typically, my biggest thing that I almost always avoid either making myself or adding are homebrew spells, but let's take a look. Let's entertain the idea. Force Lightning, we know Vader doesn't use Force Lightning. Force Push, you slam a concussive blast of force at one creature, may, must make a strength saving throw, and a failed save target is pushed 20 feet away and knock prone. I actually, that's a relatively reasonable spell. So we're going to give him Force Push. I don't disagree with that spell. Uh, force Repulse, no. So, uh, we're going to give him Jump, because he does do some pretty ridiculous looking jumping in, in uh, I think, in Empire. Um, second level spells, Aid, Blur, Common Motions, Dark Vision, Detect, uh, we're going to give him Detect Thoughts, I think for sure. Because uh, we can see that he's got some abilities like that. Uh, Force Choke. How's this one work? Choose a humanoid you can see within range. Target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Or be paralyzed for the duration. So that's basically... Um, Force Choke is essentially hold person. Um, however, when the cast a spell at third level or higher, the target takes 3d10 force damage for each slot above second at the start of each of its turn. Not unreasonable but so we'll give him that because that's like sort of his signature move uh force choke uh invisibility knock lesser restoration levitate locate object magic weapon mirror image uh prayer of healing we're gonna give him saber throw which i didn't even look at but i know that's something that he does so let's see what that does uh, you toss your lightsaber, sending it spinning through the air in a line 30 feet long and 5 feet wide in the direction you choose. 
uh, before. Each creature in line must make a dexterity saving throw. Creature takes 3d8 radiant damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful save. Lightsaber returns back to your hand. Now, again, these I, this is part of the reason I say this, is looking through these spells, they're fairly reasonable as far as spells go. Um, typically, homebrew spells are a shot in the dark. You usually get something that doesn't, like, why does it exist? Or it's way too OP that no reasonable DM would allow it. So we've got six spells. You know, it's two more. So let's take a look. Uh, combo motions, dark vision, aid, blur, gust of wind, hold person. He doesn't really use invisibility. Knock, not so much. He doesn't levitate. He doesn't locate object. Magic weapon is useless when you have a lightsaber. He doesn't make multiples of himself via mirror image. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give him levitate, but not for himself. This is for other people. Although, levitate, they float down to the ground rather than, like, fall. But he does, like, throw people out of the way. But I guess that's sort of covered in force push. Um... I'll, I'll give him suggestion. He, as we said, he doesn't really... Uh, he does not. That's actually not on the list, believe it or not. Predestined digitation. Um, hmm. I think just detect magic. Detect magic is, I feel, a very Jedi thing that probably all Jedis have. So, we've got catapult for throwing objects. Force push, because he uses it. Jump, because he does it as well. Detect magic. Um... We know he can detect thoughts as he's reading Luke's mind at one point where he talks about knowing lo about Leia. Force choke is his sort of his bread and butter. Saber throw. And then we just gave him suggestion to round it out. Um, and I feel like that's pretty good. So, we've got our spells already taken care of. Well, that's all of our stuff up to level 12. Uh, what else do we got here? Alright, let's go back. Oh, this is spellcasting class is monk. Spellcasting ability is wisdom. And we're going to come up here and we're going to do the rest of his stats. So at 4, we're going to put this up to 18. And then at 8, we're going to put this up to 20. And we're going to put this... Actually, we're going to go... This is going to go to 18. Um, hmm... I don't know if I want to give him... Eh, it's hard to say. I wasn't sure if I wanted to give him max wisdom for maxing out his force abilities. As we know, Anakin never went too far in his Jedi training. Uh, however, it's hard to say when you have inconsistencies. Like what you see in Return of the Jedi, uh, you know, in that whole the whole original series. And then you see the end of Rogue One and he's just knocking the shit out of people left and right. So it's kind of hard to say. Um... Dex. Lightsaber is Dex. So. But I would also argue that he's not that great of a lightsaber fighter either. That's hard. Of, that's, again, part of the problem is, again, I'm building Vader, not Anakin. So I'm basically ignoring the original or the uh, the, the prequel trilogy. Um, but in Star Wars, you know, the original trilogy, lightsabers were more a tool for storytelling and showing conflict between characters rather than a cool flashy fight sequence so it's hard to say because i mean look at the fight you see what he does at the end of the new movie rogue one and then you see how he fought obi-wan and that was like a much slower drawn out fight whereas he could if if just earlier in the same time frame he was wrecking people the way he did uh, i don't know hard to hard to judge so we're gonna keep his stats like this uh, i'm also gonna say his con's not that great because um you know he got wrecked up by that force lightning pretty hard and luke took it too and it was all right look luke took continual blasts and all he did was pick up but maybe that, that you could argue that there's a vulnerability to electricity because of all the electronics i don't want to start splitting hairs here because we're gonna be here all night stuff we've encountered in the past where we just go we start going through this pretty crazy, and, uh, and then we get caught up. So, this is one, this is four, one, zero, five, minus one. 
And then this is five. This is eight. This is, uh, oh wait, this, oh he's level 12, so this is gonna be one. Uh, yeah, so this is zero, this is nine, and then this is minus one. And then we'll go through and do these real quick. Four, five, four, one, minus one, zero, insight is a nine. Intimidation, we're saying this was a wisdom based intimidation because he uses the force for this, so we're giving him a nine on this as well. Uh, zero, five, zero, nine on his perception. Minus one, I don't imagine he's a very good performer. Uh, four, 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 five, this is a 19. Uh, so, his initiative is a four, his AC is a 19. Uh, and his HP is, um, let's just do that calculation real quick. 11 times, oh, this is way easier than I thought it was going to be. 11 times 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 9, 75. A little bit on the low HP side, but that's okay. Um... Yeah, it's hard to argue. Like I said, we start splitting hairs on this, and we're we're gonna be here all night. Um, we can argue that perhaps the suit. Well, we'll get to that when we deal with magic items. So uh, we've got all of that in there. Let's jump back here. So what does he get at level three? Uh, he gets a lightsaber, which he has already. It um, it's a magic weapon. Uh, is a martial melee weapon with finesse and light properties. Sheds bright light in a 15 or dim light in a 15 foot radius. Is considered a monk weapon. Can be used with any monk ability that requires an unarmed strike or free hand. So it can be used to do the deflect and the flurry of blows. Uh, it does radiant damage. Um, it uses your monk. Uh, the die changes your monk level changes, and he only uses one. So as a level 12 monk, he does a d8. So his lightsaber does 1d8, uh, and that is radiant. And then he has a 8 to hit with his lightsaber. Um, uh, and let's just replace this with two uh, lightsaber strikes. Um, and then this you can uh, you can make a. Lightsaber strike. Believe me, you guys who watched me play through Out of the Abyss, uh, Droop was a monk. I heavily petitioned Sean to let Droop be a, a Jedi, and he told me I couldn't be a Jedi. So I, I tried. Alright. So we handled that. We got the lightsaber out of the way. Uh, let You know what? Let's just deal with this stuff, and then we'll go back and fill in the monk stuff after the fact. So he has Force Sense. Um... Force sense. Um, and that grants us what? Uh, let you you have uh, uh, sense emotions uh, emotions of creatures within thirty feet. Advantage. Insight checks. Uh, Uh, I'm going to say that Vader doesn't have passive detect good and evil, uh, because he didn't figure out any of the shit going down with the Emperor and all that crap. Like, he was just, he was just a moron. So, his, his good and evil sense is way off. Um, so, uh... Mr. John's insight checks... Um, attack the presence of hidden of, of creatures 
That's in 30 feet. Um, and then we have blade weaving, which does uh, new use and attack action. A spell with a casting time of one action can be cast as bonus action and two key points. Okay, so we've got all of the Jedi stuff out of the way, so now it's just filling in the monk stuff. Um, okay, so we've got deflect missiles. Deflect missiles. This is... Action to reduce damage by... Um... 1d10 plus uh, dex mod plus monk uh, I went with resilient wisdom because he doesn't seem to be uh, he seems fairly resilient in his, in his mental capacities uh, also as a way to help boost his wisdom up um, so he's got proficiency in strength, dex, and wisdom. I realize that that doesn't make sense technically for a monk, because at level 14 you gain proficiency in all saving throws, but I'm going to say that he died before he hit level 14, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it was an easy way to get his, I mean, I would say observant, but he clearly wasn't. Uh, if you, if, you know, at least in my opinion, I mean... I feel like someone who is observant, that whole high ground situation would have been easily rectified. Uh, right, so we're back to the player's handbook. Um, uh, if damage reduced to zero, uh, spend one key point to reflect. Back. Okay, slow fall. I'm gonna say he doesn't have that either, because he doesn't really do that. Uh, he does have extra attack though. Um, I'll give him stunning strike. I feel like that's Jedi esque, very force like. Yes, you're also right. Someone would have noticed the big <laughs> self-destruct. Like, I mean, come on, seriously. How did they not know that? Um, one key point when striking with a monk weapon. Force target to make a con save or be stunned. Until start of the next round. Gonna move this down here. I only said uh, plus two is plus two is plus two decks. Uh, he does have evasion. I'm gonna give him evasion, even though I feel like that. I feel like that's not even realistic because I mean if you're trying to think about mechanics he would have only taken half damage from the lightning bolts um, and he wasn't very evasive mm. it's a function of the character though so it's hard to hard to decide I'm just gonna give him evasion move on to this next sheet here uh, however 
We do have Stillness of Mind, which is very Jedi. Uh, well, you can use your action to end an effect that's causing you to be charmed or frightened. Um, stillness of Mind. Uh, one action to end a charm or frightened effect. And then this is what I was talking about. Purity of Body. You're immune to poison and disease. I'm saying that's not the key flowing through his body or the force flowing through his body, but the magical uh, or, or the nature of his his robotics that keep him alive. Um. Purity of body, immune to poison and disease. Um, okay, so actually, believe it or not, we're there. We just did it. We built Vader. Uh, we gave him... Uh, we still gotta do some magic items, which... I'm gonna go to you guys what you feel like is realistic that the, uh... That the, that the robotics and the breathing apparatus should do for him. I have some thoughts, but we'll go through that. So, we got his stats here, 12, 18, 13, 10, 28... He's got proficiency in strength, dex, and wisdom saving throws, proficiency in arcana, insight, intimidation, perception, and religion. Uh, low on the HP, low on the movement speed, but a decent AC with 19. His lightsaber, he's got a plus 8 to hit, but it does a D8 radiant damage, which may not seem like a lot, but remember he is a monk, so every turn he can do a minimum of 3 strikes with that. 2 as his action, 1 as a bonus action. If he uses a key point, he can make th 4 total lightsaber strikes for 48 in a round he can use his lightsaber to deflect and reduce the damage of incoming missile based attacks um, if he hits with his lightsaber he can force a target to make a constitution saving throw he has the ability to sense emotions of creatures within 30 feet of him which grants advantage on insight checks against such creatures and he also has the ability to sense creatures uh, within 30 feet reaching out with his mind uh, yes hypertroller you missed that part I said Vader doesn't have fast movement because he's a slow trudging kind of powerhouse, less of a zippy fast guy. I would argue that Anakin probably did have 35 or 45 movement speed. I'd say Vader has 25 because he, we don't see him run. When you're that powerful and you can just move shit around with your mind, you don't you don't have to run. You just do the damage from a distance. Uh, we gave him evasion as well. He has Stillness of Mind, um, which is he's taking an action to end the Charm or Frightened effect on himself. His Power Suit uh, provides him with immunity to poison and disease. And his Blade Weaving ability is when he uses an action to take an, uh, to take an attack action, he can cast a spell with that has an action uh, casting time as a bonus action by spending two key points. The spells that he has is Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Message, and Mending. Uh, and his first level spells are Catapult, Force Push, Jump, Detect Magic. And uh, his second level spells are Detect Thoughts, Force Choke, Saber Throw, and Suggestion. His spell save DC is 17. His spell attack bonus is 9. Uh, as far as magic items go, we know he has a lightsaber. But that's sort of a freebie from the class. And then he has his... Uh, and we're going to call it Cyborg Power Suit. Which, I didn't open the Dungeon Master Guide, but I will now that I thought about how we may need something from it. We're going to say that his suit func functions, at the very least, as a necklace of adaptation. While wearing this mask, uh, you can breathe normally in any environment. You have advantage on saving throws against harmful gas attacks and vapors. Um, so, we're going to give him that. Uh, so, oops, that's YouTube uploading videos. Uh, let's go here. Functions as a necklace of adaptation. 
Uh, I'm not going to argue that it's mail because he's already a monk and he's got a better AC than plate mail already with a 19. Um, yeah, I think bracers of defense. That's not unreasonable. Um, he does have those sweet looking gloves. Um, uh, I'm going to say that that's part of the suit, we'll say. Uh, bestows those the uh, ability uh, oh, here we go functions as bracers of defense uh, yeah so I'm, I'm okay with that he did manage to stop a blaster bolt with his hand in Empire so we're gonna say that that's a thing he can do which is obviously never touched on again and may or may not have been a poor call storytelling wise, but he does it. So, yeah, I'm going to argue with that. Um, it gives him a 21 AC. Um, this obviously. Uh, let's rephrase that. Is permanently attuned because it's part of his body uh can't really think of anything else that jumps out to me as things that vader would have um just kind of casually flipping through here no potions um no real rings of any kind you could argue that maybe there's a cloak in there because he kind of has that mantle that he wears, uh, this cape. Um, I can't really think of anything else that's not stretching the truth here. Uh, jump back up to the top. You could argue uh, bracers of defense, or uh, bracers of defense, gloves of ogre power, but I'm going to disagree. Because we don't really see anything that makes us feel like that flat out states that he's physically strong. We only see things that, uh, you know, he uses his strength as via the force less than his physical prowess. Um, yeah, I don't really see much that really makes me feel like that gives me a Vader, a Vader vibe. If you will. Um, yeah, I don't. Maybe we could argue that. I mean, perioptive wound closure isn't bad. Uh, but, you know, I, I just. I'm trying to think about how that would function. I guess after he became Vader, that could be true. Do we know if there's any... I can't think of any reference to seeing, like, the suit self-repair him and bring him back. Um, because I would argue that if that was the case, then he wouldn't have died from the lightning from the Empire... Or the Emperor, unless you're going to argue that it shorted out the circuits, and then this, since the suit provides a periaptive wound closure, that he doesn't have that. You know what? We're also going to say that uh, all of the stuff that it gives... Um, uh, this, uh, the wearer has vulnerability to lightning damage. Um, because this is a fairly powerful item and we're still trying to keep it relatively, uh, in theme. And we do see that that does manage to mess him up pretty bad. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'll scroll down to the Perry app and we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna really argue any of these here. Um, uh, nah, that's really, I mean, I, I guess we could say they also function as goggles of night, because I'm pretty sure he can see in the dark. Um, Oh, Gozira, you. Let's pull this back up here.
And this back up over here. Um, well, thank you for the resubscription. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's arguable that, uh, why did that not update? There we go. Uh, well, thank you again for the resub, and you got, everybody got to see that super sweet image of Jake dancing uh, as our new emote there for that. Um, I'm going to say that uh, it also functions as uh, goggles of night, because I'm pretty sure he can see in the dark. Um, and then... Mm. We're scrolling down to the periapt due to Zelda's suggestion. We'll just see. I thought about the mantle of spell resistance, which is advantage on saving throws against spells. But again, it comes down to the where does uh, spells versus the force. And again, if you guys if we stuck with your suggestions at the beginning and we went with um, what's it called? If we went with uh, psionics then magic wouldn't affect it uh so preemptive wound closure you stabilize whenever you're dying at the start of your turn in addition uh whenever you roll a hit die to regain hit points double the number of hit points it restores okay i don't think that that's too overpowered in any way um and then i guess yeah okay all right i'm on board You've convinced me. And by you, I mean I talked it out and I've convinced myself. So, uh, functions as a periapt of wound closure. And then I'm going to say, where is vulnerability to lightning? That's not how you spell closure. Closure. Uh, where is vulnerability to lightning damage? If struck with lightning damage... Uh, the periapt of wound closure functionality is disabled until you complete a short rest. There. I think that that's reasonable. It's a lot. But it's like his he's got one basically magic item that he can't unattune from, and it provides several uh, abilities, but it also has a, a decent disadvantage. Uh, so, it, to, to recap once more, we see all of his stats here. He's got a decent AC. He's got weaker on the HP side, but we see him, he goes down pretty quick against that in that fight with the Emperor. He's got his lightsaber. He's got his key points, which will allow him to dodge, allow him to make additional lightsaber strikes up to four in a given round. He can use it to deflect incoming attacks. He can use it to stun his folks. He can sense, uh, or stun his enemies, rather. He can sense emotions and creatures around him. He can end charms and frightened effects on himself. He's immune to poison and disease, which is a function of the suit. Uh, when he makes an attack action, he can cast a spell as a bonus action. We see his cantrips. And his few list of spells down here. And his magic items are the lightsaber that he is granted as part of his class. Uh, and then the cyber power suit, cyborg power suit that he wears, which he's permanently unattu or attuned to, gives him the necklace of adaptation, which lets him breathe in any environment and gives him advantage on saving throws against harmful um, gas-like attacks. It functions as bracers of defense. It gives him the ability of goggles of night so he can see in the dark. And it also will allow him to stabilize when he hits zero hit points. However, it puts him vulnerable to lightning damage. And if he takes lightning damage, it uh, deactivates the periaptive wound closure ability until he takes a short rest. Uh, and he has resilient wisdom as uh, his feet. And the ability scores we gave him were plus two wisdom, plus two wisdom, plus two dex to land on these final stats. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. We used, uh, just to point out, we used uh, the Player's Handbook for most of this, the Dungeon Master Guide to pull the ideas for the various uh, magic items, and we used this Homebrew Way of the Jedi Monk subclass, which I will put a link in the description of the video when it goes on YouTube. I will also 
post this link here in the Twitch chat for those of you if you want to go check it out for yourself and uh, you'd like to uh, possibly use it in one of your games or something of that nature, there, there's where it is in case you want to find it. Uh, I also highly recommend if you're, they haven't really updated, they kind of fell off the face of the earth, but the D&D 5e homebrew.tumblr.com was very, very good for tracking down and compiling a ton of D&D homebrew content. Uh, but then they all of a sudden just basically stopped. But there's a lot of good stuff there. I highly recommend if you have the time to comb through it. Um, I think that's pretty much going to do it for us here on this show. Uh, let's go ahead and go to bit.ly slash IBC plan to see what the plan is going forward. Right now, next week is Iron Man. So that's going to be fun. Uh, so as you can see, we've already done several classes here. I have to add one down the bottom here, which is, uh, level 20 character. Um, yes, Pinterest has a surprising amount of D&D stuff as well. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you follow Nerd Immersion on Pinterest. I post a lot of, I pin a lot of things. I pin a lot of D&D things, whether it be character classes or homebrew things, or just ideas for cool concepts and art and locations and things for homebrew campaigns, as well as a ton of other things, all of our videos and my cosplay uh, tutorials and things of that nature. There's a lot of good stuff on our on our Pinterest. But as you can see so far, we've done Trevor Belmont from Castlevania, a pole arm wielding bugbear, tuxedo mask from Sailor Moon, Hellboy, the most dragony dragon character possible. We just completed Darth Vader. This video will probably go up on Friday. And next week, we're, I'm building Iron Man and followed by several other characters you can see here. Um, but uh, everything from Ichigo from Bleach to Groot to Shrek to Tingle from The Legend of Zelda. We are all over the place with what we've got built. Now we're pretty much through to the end of this year with suggestions, so I very much appreciate it. I'm going to change this as we are permanently switching. Uh, we switched it once before, but we're going to switch to 10 p.m. as our start time, so that way uh, we get a, we have the opportunity to get some more of you folks in here to chat, uh, as well as uh, you know, it just makes things easier on my end. So, since we're going to end here, I would like... Um, Yes. Well, you know what? You're going to have to tune in next week to see what we're doing for Iron Man. How about that? Um, but I would like you guys, before we leave, I'd like to raid uh, my oh, some friends of mine over on... They're actually streaming right now, I think, if they haven't already stopped, which if they stopped, then that kind of sucks. Then it won't work. Let's find out. Um... Uh... Let's go to, what is it, uh, yeah, don't split the podcast. We'll see if they're still streaming. If so, then we'll go raid them. If not, then we miss the opportunity. They are still streaming. So, when I end this here, let's everybody jump over, um... And we'll go with uh, we'll go with that. We'll just throw nerd immersion raid there in the chat for them. These are some personal friends of mine. These are the Venture Maidens. They're a great actual play podcast of all female players and dungeon master. Um, they're on a larger podcast network. And if you guys didn't get to see, they got picked up by wizards of the coast so they are actually part of wizards of the coast podcast of annihilation um i've been friends with these ladies for a while and we just hung out for the first time in person uh you know what hyper troller if that's what you want to post uh that's crazy but they'll get the point we'll jump over there um but anyway i wanted to uh just throw that out there throw them a little bit of love and maybe you know if you guys like it check out the stream the podcast is available on all of their various podcasting sites um, but yeah, I think it'll be two or three weeks from now, the podcast of Annihilation stuff goes up by Wizards of the Coast, and uh, they are one of them. There's going to be actual cross-promotion, all the different podcasts all work together. 
I mean, we're talking about some larger podcasts like Brian Posehn's podcast, Nerd Poker, the folks over at Encounter Roleplay. There's a lot of cool, intricate stuff. So, um, actually, I'm going to go over there right now. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to put uh, Nerd Immersion Raid. And if you guys wouldn't mind jumping over there as well, uh, I'll kick it off and then everybody follow suit with me and uh, we'll go over there. So anyway, thank you guys for coming out and checking out the video uh, and the stream. If you're watching on YouTube, we appreciate that as well. And uh, I will catch you guys. Oh man, Exploding Dice is raiding. Let's go hashtag Nerd Immersion Rage. How about that? And I will catch you guys over there. Later. <laughs>